Text-driven image generation models can now synthesize images of diverse objects and things. These models translate complex texture descriptions into highly detailed and accurate images. It seems that the model doesn't know how to count. Let's try more samples. Other state-of-the-art models also have similar issues, like Midjourney, Emu from Meta, or Firefly from Adobe. They also struggle to generate images that faithfully respect the spatial composition in the text plum. Here, almost all the dogs are sitting on the chair, not next to the chair. We present a simple method to fix this, generating correct composition and object counts. Our main idea is to leverage a large language model to generate a spatial layout and use the layout to guide the image generation. However, it's not that easy. Let's look at several examples testing the capability of counting, spatial composition, color, and relative object sizes. The large language models like ChatGPT or Llama 2 can produce plausible spatial layout from the text plum. However, existing grounded text to image generation methods like Legion fail to respect the layout, resulting in incorrect count, mixing up objects, and ignoring color attributes. We present a training free, plug and play approach to improve the compositional capability of text to image generation models. How does it work? In each step, we use a noise predictor to estimate the noise, condition on the time step, and an input text plum. This noise estimation allows us to predict a clean image and a less noisy image for the next step. By repeating the process for multiple iterations, we can generate a clean image. But wait, why is the dog missing from the image? To fix this, we need to understand how we generate images conditioned on the text plum. Most methods use cross-attention. We start with the image features and a sequence of text tokens. Our goal is to produce a new image feature mixing the text and image information. We compute a query from the image features and a key and value from the text tokens. We can now calculate the cross-attention between the image and text and use the attention weight to compute the weighted average of the values. We can rearrange the output and add them back to our image features. This allows us to inject the text information into the image features. Visualizing the cross-attention maps helps us understand where the text information is injected into the image. Here are the cross-attention maps corresponding to the horse and the dog tokens. Our idea is to use the predicted layout to guide the cross-attention maps. More specifically, we hope to have higher attention weights within the bounding box for the correct token and lower attention weights for regions outside the box. We formulate this as a loss function and call it cross-attention refocusing. Because this is a differentiable function of the noisy image XT, we can update it using gradient descent. We can apply a similar approach to self-attention layers in a noise prediction network. Self-attention layers extract query key values from the image tokens. We then compute attention maps to model the dependency and relationships within the image. Here is the self-attention map visualization for a query position P within the bounding box for the horse. We add a loss that penalizes the attention weights for regions outside the box to avoid object mixing. In summary, we use a spatial layout to guide the sampling process for accurate cross-attention and self-attention maps. We call this attention refocusing. This step does not require any training and can be applied to any diffusion model in a plug-and-play manner. Let's see some results. Existing methods often ignore the objects specified in the plum, generate incorrect object count, mix up Pikachu and Macron, and blend the appearance of a bear and a deer. Adding the attention reinforcing module to each method improves the generation quality. Here, our results align well with the layout guidance. Even with the same layout guidance, our methods still generate diverse samples. Our method also works for region-based control. Here, the results from ControlNet suffer from hallucination and object mix-up. Adding our methods produce images that are more faithful to the text plum. Our methods also support intuitive editing through instructions, like adding another cat, replacing the cat with a pumpkin, adding a hat, a cloak, and a ghost. Please check out our project website for more information. Thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next time.